It's time to break the cycle of sin. It's time to break the cycle of shame. It's time to break the cycle of heaviness. It's time to break the cycle of confusion. Whatever is robbing you of that divine peace that is rightfully yours, whatever is robbing you of joy in the Holy Spirit, it's time for that thing to be broken off of your life once and for all. And I truly believe that the Word of God carries the power to destroy those strongholds in your life. Number one, you have to receive the Word. Now, this may seem basic, but it is the way you break a stronghold and stay free. When you receive the Word in your life, you're allowing light to shine. The more of the word that you receive, the less powerful these strongholds will become. Number two, meditate on the word. Once a stronghold is exposed, it's easier to monitor your thoughts or control your thoughts. Now, the scripture commands us several times how to think and what to think. Think on these things. The scripture would not command us to do something that we're not capable of doing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the scripture says, think on these things, it's telling you something that you're able to do. So you have the power to take your thoughts captive, to control them and to tear them down. How do you do that? With the word. So when the enemy tells you, you are alone. Ah, the scripture says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When the scripture contradicts the lie, that's when you begin to see freedom. So I meditate on the word and meditation isn't just reading the word. Meditation is thinking about the word. You know that when you think about the word, it's like water rushing through your mind, washing your mind. Mm, How do you wash wow. your mind with the word? You run the word through it. Kind of like when you put your hands under the sink, if, you, mm -hmm. if your hands are really dirty or maybe when you're cooking, some of you who cook like with dough, you, you get the dough all over your hands. What do you have to do? You run it under water and the water, the constant flow of the water is what removes the things from your hand. In the same way, it's the constant flow of the word that removes these lies from the mind. You have to constantly be thinking on the word. So you may say, well, I already tried that. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you really? Because the scripture says, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The word of God works. Let God be true and every man a liar. Mm. God's word works. Come on. God's word works, period. So you have to wash your mind. The problem comes when we wash our mind with the word and then go get it dirty again with our YouTube searches and our Instagram scrolling and our Netflix viewings. We wash our minds with the word and then we go listen to music that makes it all filthy again. We wow. wash our minds with the word and then we go obsessing about thoughts that are not biblical. We wash our minds with the word and then we go off on these weird myths and doctrines because they're fascinating, yet they cause more torment than they do freedom. Mm. Wash your mind with the word. Keep a steady flow of the word. Number three, obey the word. Mm -hmm. The word will only work for you when you start to obey it. And that takes discipline. That takes time. There is no Christian who is in the word daily, who makes daily contact with God, not just prays, but who makes daily contact with God through prayer, who lives a lifestyle of worship, who lives a lifestyle of repentance and practices holiness. There is no Christian like that in bondage. Did you hear what I said? There is no Christian who makes daily practice of the word, who makes daily contact with the Lord through prayer, who practices a lifestyle of worship, who practices a lifestyle of repentance, and who walks in holiness, that Christian is not in bondage. That Christian in bondage does not exist. Look in the New Testament. You didn't see a whole lot of that among the apostles or the church leaders. Look in the New Testament. You didn't see a whole lot of talk about how to overcome these things. Why? Because the Christian life is a life of freedom. Mm -hmm, if you're mm -hmm. not walking in that freedom, you're settling for less than what is the Christian life. Now, I know that may sound harsh, but I don't mean it to be harsh. I mean it to be encouraging because 
We tell ourselves, oh, I already tried that. And there again is a stronghold. There's the lie you believe. I already tried that and it doesn't work for me. Those are the lies that keep you bound right there. Well, it worked for me for a little bit and then it stopped. Did it stop working or did you stop working it? Did it stop working or did you stop obeying? Did it stop working or did you fall back into your old habits? How? Because you have to make the decisions daily to practice these spiritual disciplines. You have to do it. I can't lay hands on you and impart discipline. See, we want to hear, oh, it's a curse. So you pray for me, you break it. Yeah, okay. I'll pray for you. You may experience the power of God. You may be healed from the effects of the stronghold in that moment. But if you don't address that mindset hmm. and that pattern of thinking, you're just going to go back into it again. Mm -hmm. Number four, prayer. Now, prayer can break the effects of the stronghold. This is so key. So let's say I come under a stronghold of depression because of a lie I'm believing. Let's say I believe the lie that I'm worthless. Okay, I believe that lie or I'm worthless or everybody hates me. I believe that lie. It produces feelings of heaviness in me and then that produces certain behaviors in my life. Now, someone can pray for me and I can experience breakthrough from the heaviness. I can experience breakthrough from that sense of, I may feel this joy in part. It's something broke, right? That's a break. That's deliverance. That's the breaking of a bondage. But if I don't address that stronghold, and I don't allow the word to change my patterns of thinking. And I don't allow God to work in my life through spiritual disciplines and practices. What's going to happen? I'm going to go right back into that pattern. I'm going to go right back to that place of suffering. Why? Because I didn't take the time to break that stronghold. Number five, faithfulness. You have to be faithful in doing these things. You can't just do this for two weeks and then say, well, it didn't work for me. I'm done. No, no, it takes time to develop new ways of thinking. It takes time for the word to wash. It's a process. That deliverance for believers is a process. And that's how you break the strongholds. And that's how you stay free. Practice the spiritual basics and you will avoid spiritual crisis. Practice oh, the spiritual basics and you will avoid spiritual crisis. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.